In the dusty archives of early anthropological fieldwork, something peculiar once haunted the minds of researchers examining ancient skulls from the Americas. Long before genetics confirmed it, certain Native American skeletal remains were found to share surprising traits with populations from the distant lands of Southeast Asia and Australasia. These observations, initially drawn from skull morphology, left a trail of questions too big to ignore. How could people from opposite sides of the world share such striking cranial features? Could an ancient population from Australasia have reached the New World tens of thousands of years before Columbus, or even before the ancestors of modern Native Americans crossed the Bering Strait? This curiosity was more than a hunch. Forensic anthropologists noted that some ancient skulls in South America, like the famous Luzia woman of Brazil, dating back over 11,000 years, bore traits inconsistent with what would be expected of East Asian or Siberian ancestry. Instead, they showed affinities with Australian Aboriginals and Melanesians. For decades, these findings were dismissed as anomalies, as inconvenient data points that didn't quite fit into the prevailing model of a single Siberian origin migration into the Americas during the last Ice Age. But science has a way of revisiting its ghosts, and with the rise of ancient DNA analysis, those ghosts began to whisper louder than ever before. Then came a seismic revelation, a study published in the journal Nature confirmed what morphology had long suggested. A small percentage of the ancestry in some Native American populations, especially those from the Amazon Basin, traced back to Australasia. Termed the Y population, a ghost population because it no longer exists in its pure form, this group appeared to have contributed genetic material to modern-day Amazonians. The signal was subtle, just a small fraction, but it was real, and it was ancient. What could this mean? How could a population with Australasian ancestry end up in South America? Theories began to bloom, some as bold as they were provocative. One such theory posits a trans-Pacific migration tens of thousands of years ago, long before the Bering Land Bridge became the accepted corridor of human migration. Was it possible that early humans had crossed the Pacific either directly, by island hopping or ocean faring, or by following a coastal route along the Pacific Rim? To understand how this could be possible, we must journey to another skeleton, unearthed not in the Americas but in China. The Tianyuan Man, a 40,000-year-old human found near Beijing, provides a crucial clue. This ancient man had both East Asian and Denisovan ancestry, along with a trace of what some researchers have described as an Australasian-like genetic signature. The Tianyuan man is a genomic time capsule, a fragment of a population that was genetically complex and geographically mobile. Tianyuan man is also related to the Ong tribe of the Andaman Islands, Papuan and Australian Aboriginals, and Native Americans, implying a fascinating connection. The lineage of the Tianyuan man is thought to have diverged from the ancient East Eurasians through a southern dispersal route, eventually dividing into the Tianyuan lineage and a lineage ancestral to all modern East and Southeast Asians. Basal East Asian or Deep Asian ancestry, represented by Tianyuan or Andamanese Onga, contributed to Southeast Asia's population, following Australasian ancestry and preceding expansions of ancient Southern East Asians associated with the spread of Austroasiatic and Austronesian languages. Some South American populations, particularly the Surui and Karitiana, show a connection to Oceanians, the Andamanese Ong and the Tianyuan Man, but not to present-day East Asian populations, suggesting that the ancestral Native American populations that migrated to the Americas were structured with different types of East Asian influence. That this connection exists for the Tianyuan Man means that as far back as 40,000 years ago, his ancestry is at least partially found in some subpopulations of East Asia and must persist in some form until the colonization of the Americas. Sundaland and the Sahul were first populated by ancestors of modern Papuan New Guineans and Australian Aboriginal populations, followed by deep mainland Asian, Tianyuan or Ong-related ancestry. Tianyuan Man and other archaeological discoveries have led researchers to believe that modern humans lived in northern East Asia as early as 40,000 years ago. What if the ancestors of the Y population had already been moving across Asia and Southeast Asia, mixing with Denisovans and picking up genetic markers from Australasia? 
Could a branch of this population have followed the coastlines, thriving on marine resources and gradually making their way toward the Americas, perhaps via Japan, the Kuril Islands, and down the Pacific Rim? Such a journey would have been arduous, spanning generations, yet not beyond the reach of early humans equipped with simple boats and an unrelenting will to explore. Alternatively, a more daring hypothesis suggests a direct Pacific crossing. Recent research into the maritime capabilities of early humans has upended our assumptions about their limitations. If humans reached Australia by at least 65,000 years ago, they were certainly capable of crossing significant bodies of water. The ocean was not an impenetrable wall, but a highway dotted with islands, and with sea levels significantly lower during the last ice age, the distances between land masses were considerably reduced. Could a courageous band of seafarers from near Oceania have reached the western shores of South America, either by design or by accident? Skeptics are quick to point out the lack of archaeological sites along such a route, but absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Much of the Pacific Rim and its ancient coastlines now lie submerged, hiding any trace of early wayfarers beneath layers of sediment and salt water. In recent years, underwater archaeology has started to yield results, revealing submerged habitations and tools along what would have been coastal highways. As this field grows, it may one day unearth the missing links in this story. Interestingly, the genetic signal from the Y population is not evenly distributed among Native American groups. It appears to be concentrated in specific South American tribes, particularly in the Amazon. This geographic pattern raises more questions. Did the Australasian-related migrants arrive first, only to be later overwhelmed by larger Siberian-derived migrations, or did they follow a separate route that bypassed North America altogether, arriving in South America via the sea? Some researchers believe that these early migrants may have come into contact with other archaic humans, such as the Denisovans, who left their own genetic legacy in the Tianyuan Man. The Denisovan DNA, found today in Melanesians and some East and South Asians, suggests that interbreeding was common as humans moved across the ancient world. It's possible that these interactions shaped the genetic architecture of the Y population long before they ever reached the Americas. Cranial morphology, once sidelined in favor of genetic data, is now enjoying a quiet resurgence as both lines of evidence begin to align. For years, the unique skull shapes observed in ancient South American remains were treated as curiosities. Now, they are being seen for what they truly are echoes of a deeper, more complex human migration story. When the bone structure speaks the same language as the genome, we must listen. The implications are profound. If people with Australasian ancestry reached South America 25,000 to 30,000 years ago, the peopling of the Americas cannot be reduced to a single wave across the Bering Strait. Instead, it paints a picture of multiple migrations, some perhaps interwoven, others distinct. It redefines our understanding of the capabilities of early humans and forces us to consider that humanity's most daring voyages may have occurred long before recorded history. This theory also dovetails with recent archaeological discoveries in the Americas that suggest a much earlier human presence than previously believed. Stone tools found in sites like Chiqui White Cave in Mexico, dating back over 30,000 years, challenge the traditional Clovis First model. If people were in Mexico that early, and others in South America carried Australasian ancestry, the puzzle becomes richer, not simpler. So what kind of people were these early migrants? Were they seafaring adventurers, clinging to the coasts and feeding on shellfish as they skirted the Pacific Rim? Were they hunter-gatherers who braved the interior, leaving behind scant traces of their existence? Did they coexist with later arrivals, trading and mingling, or were they pushed into the dense Amazon rainforest, their genetic legacy diluted by time. And what of the children of these unions? Did they carry stories of their ancestors who came from the rising sun, who followed stars and fish across great waters? Oral traditions among some South American indigenous groups speak of ancient sea crossings and distant lands. While such tales cannot serve as scientific proof, they offer tantalizing hints that the memory of these voyages may live on in myth and song. Today we stand at the edge of a new understanding of the human journey. The old model, while elegant in its simplicity, is giving way to a more tangled, thrilling narrative, 
one that spans continents, blends cultures, and defies expectations. The story of the Y population, Tianyuan Man, and the Australasian genetic signal in South America invites us to rethink not only the route our ancestors took, but the sheer scope of their ambition. It also challenges us to be open to new possibilities. Could other ghost populations be waiting to be discovered, their traces buried in the genomes of modern peoples or hidden in caves and seabeds yet to be explored? What forgotten voyages have we yet to uncover? As we peer further into our genetic past and continue to uncover clues from bones, artifacts and landscapes, one thing becomes increasingly clear. The history of human migration is not a straight line. It is a vast web, woven across time and space, full of twists, dead ends and miraculous journeys. And somewhere in that web lies the story of a people from Australasia who reached the far side of the world, leaving behind just enough of themselves to stir our curiosity and to rewrite what we thought we knew about the first Americans. The ancient genomes of the 40,000-year-old Tianyan man from China and the 34,000-year-old Skalkip woman from Mongolia both contain Neanderthal and Denisovan introgressed DNA in regions associated with high elevation adaptation, nose shape, and possibly lip shape. Skalkip woman is related to ancient North Eurasians and Paleo-Siberians, both ancestors of Native Americans. Another recent study, which looked at ancient human fossils from Panama and South America, discovered Denisovan, Neanderthal, and Australasian genetic clues in the remains of one Panamanian fossil. Interestingly, the genomes of a 1,000-year-old human fossil from Panama, known as PAPV173, contained more Denisovan ancestral genes than Neanderthal-specific genes. Most humans today, however, have more Neanderthal DNA than Denisovan DNA. In terms of total non-sapiens DNA, this Panamanian fossil had 80% Denisovan DNA and only 20% Neanderthal DNA. The increased Denisovan ancestry appears to correspond with an increase in ancestry from the indigenous peoples of Papua New Guinea and Australia, known as Australasians. But when did this Australasian heritage arrive in the Americas, and how much Denisovan and Neanderthal DNA did these migrations carry? Surprisingly, there is no evidence of the Australasian signal in ancient North American fossils, implying that early Australasians arrived in the Americas by crossing the Pacific Ocean. There is a vast Pacific Ocean separating Australasia from the Americas, and we still don't know how these ancestral genetic signals emerged in Central and South America, while leaving no trace in North America. Australasian ancestry in the Americas is perplexing because it has been documented for isolated fossil samples, separated by vast distances in location and time, with no discernible pattern. While the study's findings shed new light on the migrations and ancestry of these early inhabitants, they also suggest that the region's genetic history is much more complex than scientists previously believed. As stated, the sample from Panama had significant amounts of Denisovan ancestry, which is unusual except in Papua and Australia, as well as similar levels of Neanderthal DNA to most Eurasians, around 2%. Moreover, the new study in communications biology discovered Denisovan and Neanderthal introgressed haplotypes in a Central American population with significant Native American heritage. Modern genetic studies reveal that some Native American populations, especially those in South America, carry small but significant traces of Denisovan DNA. This Denisovan ancestry is primarily observed in populations that migrated across Asia and into the Americas, suggesting that Native American ancestors likely encountered Denisovans or populations with Denisovan admixture during their ancient journey. While Denisovan DNA is generally less prominent in Native Americans than in populations such as Melanesians and Australian Aboriginals, these traces provide a window into the complex interbreeding and migrations of ancient humans. Thank you.